Greetings everybody and welcome to a new video. I hope you're doing well today. As for me, I'm doing great. The rising temperature and the absence of snow surely do agree with me. Except I'm feeling a bit bony today. I've been doing a bit of lumberjacking in the past few days and even though I'm really careful not to overextend myself with my chronic illness and all, it's starting to feel a bit bony in there. Especially in my back. There's like a bone near my shoulder blade that feels ever so slightly misaligned. It really doesn't hurt much right now, but I do have ligament hyperlaxity, which means my bones just kind of like to pop out sometimes. And when one bone pops out, especially in the back, it usually snowballs into another subluxation, and then another, and then another, and then another, until it starts feeling like a particularly flimsy Jenga tower on top of like a card castle, on top of a bowling alley, on top of eggshell. So as much as I enjoy a good chainsaw, I have to give it a rest for a couple of days because things could go south very quickly. And I'd like to avoid being stuck in bed for five days while pumping my body full of painkillers and muscle relaxants and other stuff. So today's project. This lovely cottage core slash history bounding apron I'm wearing right now was made using half of a tablecloth that I bought especially for this at IKEA. The tablecloth was made of approximately half and half cotton and linen and was priced at $19.99 at IKEA. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description box down below, but for this price I got enough fabric to make two aprons like the one I'm wearing right now. Since I had already made a cottage core dress that was based on an Edwardian shirt waist pattern, I wanted to do something that had kind of the same feel to it. I went with the same era for the apron. I used a few antique plates for inspiration and I think I got pretty close to my sources. Here's one of the antique fashion plates I drew upon. I couldn't find an exact date, but those fantail walking skirts were worn from the last decade of the 19th century until the first of the 20th. But those Gibson girl hairstyles are a dead giveaway for the 1900s and early 19 teens, so I would date this somewhere between 1900 and 1910. That would mean this antique fashion plate is hailing from the Edwardian era. The basic shape is pretty simple. There's a gathered rectangle skirt portion attached to a pinafore via a waistband. The straps usually cross in the back and the waist is tied with a ribbon or tape. One element I noticed in this particular fashion plate is the bottom edge of the skirt portion is often trimmed either with ruffles, insertion lace, colored bands, etc. This gave me the idea to place the striped edge of my tablecloth at the bottom of my skirt to mimic those decorations. The other element worth noticing is how they often decorated the straps and shoulder areas again with lace, colored trims, ruffles, etc. I really like the ones that had kind of a flap over the shoulders. I kept that in mind when strategically placing the remainder of my striped edges. There's one other fashion plate. This one too looks like it comes from the 1900s, so it's Edwardian. I pulled it there to show you that the straps can either cross in the back and be sewn to the edges of the skirt, or they can be made into a V that joins at the center back. It's all up to you. So this is my rough cutting plan. I've synthesized the edge motif with a single pink stripe and remember that half of the tablecloth got used already, so we're gonna be using the second half. The tablecloth is said to be 57 by 94 inches, but it's actually a tad larger than that. The largest part of the tablecloth is this big 27 inches by 64 inches rectangle. This here is the width of the apron and is gonna be gathered up to fit the waist measurement that I wanted to have. The width of your apron skirt and the density of its gathers are totally up to you. I personally went with a width of 16 inches gathered 4 times. 4 times 16 is 64 inches. And you really don't have to gather this densely if you're on the larger size. You can use less fabric on your skirt and this edge here will be at the bottom of the skirt. 
As for the rest of the tablecloth, we have enough in there to make a pinafore, some straps, and some decorative edges for the shoulder. We will cut those as we go. First, let's cut that 64 by 27 inch panel, and then let's finish this raw edge right here by turning it inwards twice to have a hem approximately the same size as the other side. Next, I'm pinning that leftover tablecloth piece onto my dress form in order to measure and cut myself a pinafore. I'm just cutting it and setting it aside for now while I make two and a half inch wide strips with the rest. The strips will be an inch and a half wide and they have half inch seam allowances. I also made sure to set that edge motif aside in order to use it on my shoulders. I'm left with 8 strips of about 27 inches each. I'm sewing them in 4 groups of 2 to make 4 longer strips. Two of those long strips need to be backed with either ribbon or tape. I'm using this 1 inch wide twill tape and I'm sewing it to the wrong side of the strip directly on the machine, securing it on both sides. They now need a quick trip to the ironing board where I'll press one of their long seam allowances. I'm doing the same to the ones that have haven't been reinforced and I'm also using this occasion to press the edges of my shoulder flaps so that they'll all be finished except for the dark brown ones which will be hidden inside the straps. I'm sewing those fresh hems by machine and I'm setting the flaps aside for now. All my apron pieces are prepared now and are ready to assemble. First, I need to attach the straps to the sides of the pinafore. I'm pinning one regular and one reinforced strap to the side of the pinafore, right sides facing each other, on the side that hasn't been pressed. These two long seams then need to be done by machine. The next step is to make a waistband. Because of the way I cut my other pieces, I don't have enough material to cut from the straps to make it, but fortunately I still had one leftover piece from my previous apron. It was reinforced with ribbon instead of tool tape. The piece is about 20 inches, which is for me more than enough. I'm marking the center front as well as the projected side edges of the pinafore. The pinafore is a rectangle piece, but the bottom edge is narrower. It needs to be gathered at the waist a bit. For now, I'm only pinning and stitching its strap components to the waistband, leaving the panel unsewn. To make my gathers, I'm making two parallel rows of running stitches, pulling on them to give the panel the appropriate width, and then pinning and backstitching everything in place. That leftover waistband also came in two layers. I'm using the other one to gather and attach the skirt portion on it. I'm doing just like I did with the pinafore. First, I'm pinning and stitching the edges together, minding the seam allowances, of course, and then I'm gathering everything with two parallel rows of running stitches. The panel is quite large and the gathers are quite dense, so I'm fiddling around with the individual pleats to distribute them evenly, pin them 
them and then carefully backstitch them in place. I can then attach the pinafore portion to the skirt portion by sandwiching the two waistbands together. I had to sew them by hand and I also had to remember to leave the side and top ends unsewn because I'll need to insert the straps in there before I close everything up. To think of it though, I'm ready to insert the ribbons at both ends of the waistband to be able to tie it in my back. This ribbon is more decorative than the twill tape because it will be visible in the end. One of the very last things I need to do is to arrange the shoulder flaps and gather them to make a frill. I already did the first strap, I'll show you how I do it with the second. First, I'm marking where I want the gathers to begin and to end. And then I'm pinning and stitching the ends of the flaps to one side of the strap, right sides facing each other. I can then gather that long panel with the two rows of parallel running stitches, pull on them, distribute and pin the pleats, and then secure them in place with the back stitching. Since they've been pressed on both sides, it's then very easy to just pin everything together and give them a few hand stitches in order to close the straps and hide the frills raw edges between these two layers. Once both the straps are stitched together, I'm ready to measure them out, make them cross in the back and attach them into the upper side bits of the waistband. I'm marking the spot on my straps where I thought they would sit on the waistband based on the measurements from my previous apron. I'm pinning the straps in place for now because I need to try it out before I cut and sew them into their definitive length and angle. And lo and behold, it fits! I'm very pleased with the shape, the fit and the stripes placement, and everything is where it needs to be, so I'm very carefully stepping out of the apron to mark, trim, insert and stitch the straps in place, sandwiched in between the two waistband layers. Finally, as a personal touch, I used two bits of ribbon to put two handles at the bottom of my skirt portion. This wasn't in any of the fashion plates I looked at, but they'll allow me to put stuff in the apron while keeping my hands free. And this is it for today! As always, I'd like to thank you so very much for watching. You know, I... I don't do this for profit, I do this for my own little fun and seeing some of you here every week it's just... it gives me the motivation to put myself out there. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a big thumbs up. Have you ever made yourself some aprons using tablecloths? If you did please tell me all about it in the comments down below. I feel like I should hit the thrift store and like buy all the tablecloths they have and start making aprons like in all shapes and with frills, without frills. You know, you really don't have to use an apron from Ikea. It's just the price and the quantity of fabric and the little edge motif placement was just so very convenient. Any kind of tablecloth would do. I wonder how it would work with a waterproof tablecloth. Let me tell you what, I'm gonna try to hit the thrift stores in the next few days and if I can, I'm gonna try to buy some tablecloths and maybe make some more aprons. Maybe I should start selling those. You know, for the price of $19.99 plus thread and ribbon from my stash, I made myself two aprons, one with frills and one without frills, and I think that this is a real steal. This is a good idea for you two at home if you have some old stuff in your stash. I mean, you don't really need to draft or measure anything, except maybe the length of those straps here. 
you know, that's the toughest bit, because at the end you've got to put the apron on yourself and, you know, try to wiggle around until you got a nice length. This was maybe the hardest part, but I figured out the length myself. If you don't think you're able to do that, well, you can always ask either your partner or your roommate to just pin those traps at the right length for you. Try it on a couple of times and you should be fine. So if you plan on making your own apron, put it on Instagram and tag me. I want to see it. If you've enjoyed this content and feel like sticking around, you may hit that subscribe button. I'm here for you on Fridays with crafty content like sewing tutorials, vintage hair tutorials, painting videos, lumberjacking, easy gardening tips, and all sorts of other arts and crafts. So if you're a crafty person, you're bound to find content that you appreciate here. You can also check out my Instagram at Galakanglaka Regina. Of course, I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. Until next time, please have a great weekend. May the forthcoming week be gentle to you. Please take care of yourself. Make sure you drink plenty of water. And I'll see you next Friday. Bye!